Welcome to Fafnir Guide. In here, I'm gonna guide you on how to play Endymion Pendulum deck, and also some stuff about Pendulum cards and Pendulum summoning. Because I'm sure a lot of people are still confused on how to play this kind of mechanics on Yu-Gi-Oh, especially those who are new to the game. Like, look at this card. Oh my God, there are a lot of text there. And I'm sure, until now, you are still not totally finished with all those text yet. <laughs> Let's talk about Pendulum Summoning first. So here's the Pendulum Monster card. If you already know how to play Pendulum Base deck, you already understand every little detail about Pendulums, you can skip this part. But I believe you gonna need to know this because there are a lot of missing information that not, not even Konami tell us. You can only get from the experience. That's why I'm sharing my experience when I'm playing Pendulum decks. Pendulum monster cards, as you can see, consists of 50% of monster and 50% a spell card. Not only a normal spell card, but it's actually a continuous spell card. You have to notice that this is a continuous spell card because you're gonna need it later on. You need to understand how continuous spell card works in this game. Pendulum monster cards have two effects. As you can see, there are pendulum effects and monster effects. Uh, you can only use its effects one at a time So if it's set as a scale The pendulum effects will be the one that activated But if it's summoned as a monster The monster effects will be the one that activated As you can see the pendulum monster have a scale number here Which I'm gonna explain it later on Because this is the one that we're gonna use to pendulum summon So I'm gonna explain how pendulum summon works Pendulum Summon only can be done once per turn. So unlike the Axis Synchro or Fusion that can summon infinitely in a turn, Pendulum Summon can only be done once per turn. So make sure you have enough resource to Pendulum Summon all of the monsters that you need. As you can see here, in order to Pendulum Summon, you must have both scale set on the field. The scale number has to be set in the correct order. But it doesn't matter if you put it the other way, as long as the number is the correct number that you want. Let's say you want to Pendulum Summon an Endymion that are level 7 monster, which means we have Servant that is scale 2, and Magister that is scale 8, which means we can Pendulum Summon any monster from hand or extra deck Pendulum Monster that have level 3 to level 7. In here, I Pendulum Summon Jekyll King that are level 6 and both of the endymion that are level 7. One of the unique traits of pendulum monster pendulum cards when the pendulum monster leaves the field because it was meant to center the graveyard from the field it will add it to the extra deck face up instead but this rule doesn't apply if the card meant to be banished or being an axis material in axis monster. So be careful when doing that. If the pendulum monster you use as a link summon, because the way the link summon works is sending the monster to graveyard, right? So the pendulum monster that already on the field goes to the extra deck instead of the graveyard. Same goes with synchros. When you synchro summon the monster that uses as a synchro material, will send to the graveyard. But with pendulum monster, it will send to the extra deck instead. But what about if Pendulum Monster being negated? Pendulum Monster would go to the extra deck anytime if it's already on the field. Since the summon of the Pendulum Monster is negated, they were never considered to be on the field. Thus they will go straight to the graveyard. For example, when you Pendulum summon all of your Pendulum Monster and your opponent Solemn Judgment or strike your summon, all of the monsters that were summoned in that Pendulum summon will go straight to the graveyard. So be careful on that. Same goes for setting up a pendulum scale. If the activation of the pendulum scale is negated, it is not considered on the field and straight to the graveyard. Once the pendulum scale is activated without any disruption, it becomes a continuous spell and the pendulum effects of that card will be ready to be activated. 
any card that negate the activation of the card's effect will not be able to negate it because the card itself is already activated. It's just the effects that hasn't been activated. That's all that I can explain about Pendulum Base Deck. Let's dive into the Endymion Guide. Actually, I have two Endymion deck, which is the Vanilla deck, which is the Endymion and the Mythical Beast combo. So we're adding more Mythical Beast monster for versatility, for extra negates, and some searcher card like Mythical Institution, Spell Power Mastery, Terraforming, and some anti hand traps as well called by the grave. Actually, same. We also have Magical Adapter and Mythical Beast Jackal. So it's more to the Mythical Beast and Endymion combo deck. The other one is the Spellbook Engine. Uh, in this one, we're adding more Spellbook, uh, where, which is the one of good card to, you know. Uh, keep drawing and activate the spell effects to increase the counter spell counter of endymion cards and mythical beast cards we also use magician souls in this spellbook engine spellbooks of secrets of course spellbook of notes and yeah actually the composition of the cards is actually the same like the vanilla one it's just adding more spellbook for the extra drawing effects but for me, this spellbook engine is actually more expensive and, you know, complicated to play it. So for this guide, I'm gonna use the Endymion Vanilla. At least you have to understand how the Endymion Pendulum deck works. So I'm gonna start by explaining the cards first. Started from our beloved boss monster. Not actually the boss monster, it's just a key monster for this deck, which is the Endymion Mighty Master of Magic. It has a scale 8, so it has a scale 8 and a level 7. So this Endymion monster can be used as a scale to summon another Endymion from hand or from extra deck. Pendulum effects of Endymion allow you to summon the Endymion itself from Pendulum Zone to Monster Zone by removing 6 spell counters from the field once again from the field that means any card that on the field that have a spell counter can be removed by Endymion to summon itself if Endymion manages to summon itself you can destroy cards without targeting based on the number of your cards on the field that can have a spell counter on it Endymion monster effects is negate any spell and trap effects activated once per turn by returning a card that has a spell counter on it to the hand to negate and destroy it. If you manage to destroy it, Endymion will absorb the spell counter of the card that Endymion returned to the hand. When Endymion have at least one spell counter on itself, Endymion will be untargetable as well indestructible by any card effects. The three Endymion supports are Serfin, Magister, and Reflection. Those three support cards when become scale, their pendulum effects require you to remove three spell counters from themselves, unlike Endymion that remove it from the field. So no difference. But we play one field card, which is Magical Citadel of Endymion. It's a field card where we can store and remove spell counters from it. Serfren Pendulum Effects is to special summon any Pendulum monster from deck and then special summon herself to the field. Magister Pendulum Effects is to special summon any Pendulum monster from face up extra deck and himself to the field. Reflection Pendulum Effects is to special summon any pendulum monster from hand and herself to the field. But all three support cards have a restriction. Those three monsters can only be special summoned once per turn. Let's say you have a Magister as a scale on the field 
and then you pendulum summon the other Magister from your hand to the field. Which means you already special summon Magister this turn. Which make Magister in the pendulum zone cannot activate its effect because it requires them to be special summoned from pendulum zone to monster zone. So be careful for that. To get spell counter on those support cards is by activating spell card. That's why you play a lot of drawing spell cards like Upstart Goblin, Into the Void, Pot of Desires, even Chicken Game. Getting spell counter and drawing cards will give us a lot more advantages when playing this deck. Setting up a pendulum scale will also give up spell counters to those support cards because it's counted as we are activating a continuous spell card. We also use spell power mastery for searching endymion cards that we need. It also able to put extra spell counters to our support pendulum monster on the field. That's all for the endymion part. Let's jump to the mythical beast part. Mythical Beast monster that we use consists of two low level monsters and two high level monsters. Their pendulum effects have a special requirement when they need to be the only pendulum scale in the pendulum zone to be able to activate these pendulum effects and destroy themselves. So be wary when playing these cards. Let's start with the low level first. Mythical Beast Jekyll or should I call Mini Jekyll has monster effects that can remove 3 spell counters from the field to tribute itself and special summon any mythical beast monster from the deck. Its pendulum effects is to give a spell counter to any cards on the field that can have spell counter and destroy himself. Mini Jekyll when being a monster can generate 1 spell counter each time a spell card activated. Same like Endymion card but only in as a monster form. Mythical Beast Garuda, you do not sleep on this card. This card can save your life. The pendulum effects of this card is target one spell or trap card on the field and destroy them and destroy this card. But the monster effects of this card is works like a hand trap. Whenever your opponent summon a monster, you can remove three spell counters from the field and special summon this card. Then without targeting, you can return that summon monster to the hand. And for the high levels one, Mythical Beast Jekyll King, or the Big Jekyll, it's one of the core monsters of this deck, since this is our only monster negate. The good part is, it's soft once per turn, and multiple copies separate effects, which means you can activate its effect multiple times based on the total copy of this card on the field. And if the same card that used the effects got resummoned back to the field, it can reuse the effects again once more. This ruling applied to Endymion cards as well. The pendulum effects, you can destroy this card and special summon other mythical beast pendulum monster from the face up extra deck to the field. Mythical beast monster sabers it's one of the boss monsters of this deck in some rare situations. Its monster effects is removing 4 spell counters from the field and target one monster and banish it. And after that absorb the original attack points of that monster. Its pendulum effects, you can destroy this card and add another mythical beast monster from deck to your hand. Only one mythical beast spell card that we use in this deck, it is Mythical Institution, a continuous spell card, where each time a mythical beast monster destroyed by battle or card effects or even destroy himself in the pendulum zone, you can place two spell counters on this card. You can remove any total of spell counter on the field to grab one monster from the deck that have the levels equal to the total of spell counters that being removed using these effects. So you can even grab Endymion as long as you remove spell counters because Endymion is level 7 monsters. 
Usually, you can combo this card with any Endymion card. Set a scale, activate Institution, use Institution effect, remove one spell counter from the scale, and grab Mini Jekyll. So you can summon it and have extra spell counter banks, or you can use it to summon Big Jekyll. As you know, Mini Jekyll is a level 1 monster. So Institution can just remove one spell counter and grab it from the deck. The tech card that we use, Abductor as a backup extra card for Servant, removing 3 spell counter to grab any Pendulum Monster from the deck. The next one is Astrograph. I prefer to demonstrate this card instead of explaining it because it has really long effects. Terraforming. Add one field spell card from the deck to your hand. Secret fillets of the spellcaster. Spell card locked down for our opponents if you control spellcaster. Be careful, this card can also backfire at you. Since it's a field spell, you can use terraforming to search this card. Mythical Bestiary. It's an instant 3 spell counters for our Endymion support cards. Called by the Grave for anti hand traps. And there's also Amano, where it can help you to survive when going second. Let's get into the extra deck. First is Vortex Dragon. Our extra Omni Negate can be summoned using Absolute Dragon. Supreme King Dragon. Usually to copy Electromat since Electromat is limited to 1. Out Ice Absolute Dragon to summon Vortex Dragon from extra deck. Diablosis to have a pick on our opponent's extra deck when going first and banish one monster from it. Rebellion can be summoned with Absolute but are rarely using it. Electromite, our core link monster to extend our pendulum combo. I'm going to demonstrate in the combo demo. And these are just generic link monster. Selene, our core link monster as well can have spell counters. Removing 3 spell counters from the field, special summon spellcaster from hand or graveyard in defense position. That 3 point of the Selene is really helpful for us to pendulum summon 3 monsters from extra deck. Since the ruling of pendulum summon from extra deck can only be 1 monster to extra monster zone. That's why playing link monster is the best for pendulum decks. Aphromax, since our monsters have low attack points, most of them are under 3000, Aphromax is our battle phase protection. Apulusa, is just an extra monster negate. Access Code Talker, you know, is our little finisher. And Underworld Goddess of Close Ward, is one of our tech cards. If you need to remove problematic monsters from the field, like Raid Raptors, Chaos Max Dragons, or Supernova, you can just use them as one of the link material to summon this monster. So this is like a kaiju in the form of link monster. So now I'm gonna demonstrate the combo setup when going first, and later I'm going to show what you can do when you're going second. Keep in mind that this combo is depends on your hand situation and your opponent's disruptions. The combo sometimes doesn't go as intended, but what I show here is usually the basic rotation of the combo. Here I'm showing you the basic setup with an abductor. 
keep in mind that if you want to activate spell card especially those drawing spell card make sure you have to set the scale first that you need before activating it unless if you want to test out if opponents have S or maxi Electromite and Astrograph is always in one package when doing the combo. Electromite on summon can send Astrograph from the deck to extra deck. When you activate Electromite effects, it requires you to destroy one of your face-up cards on the field. With the Astrograph on our extra deck, we can destroy one of our Pendulum scale and grab Astrograph from extra deck. It will trigger to chain Astrograph from your hand to summon itself and letting us grab the same Pendulum monster that was destroyed by Electromite. Plus, Electromite will letting us to draw one more card. Short explanation: Electromite and Astrograph combo is just for letting us to store more Pendulum Monster in extra deck and letting us grab the other copy from the deck. No resource depleted on the combo. As you can see here, this is the final board that you will get. Actually, I can link summon Celine to a Pulsa or Crusadia from Max for protecting our monster in battle phase. But in here, I was deciding to keep Celine because I want to resummon the pendulum monster that I want. Sometimes, if I need an extra negate, I can just bounce back the Endymion, return to my hand, and then resummon the Endymion again with Celine, which means I have an extra negate from the Endymion. If you decided to be more defensive, this second setup is for you. I remind you again that this is depends on your hand situation.
this is pretty much the final board that you can get. Obviously I can go for a Pulsa instead of Avermax, but since my monster have quite low attack and defense points, Avermax will protect them in battle phase, forcing our opponents to make play in the main phase. As you can see, in the previous setup, we do Pendulum Summon after we get our Selene up on the field to get that plus 3 Pendulum Summon from Aster deck. But what if the hand situation is forcing us to Pendulum Summon early? This is the final board if you do Pendulum Summon early, and you must at least have 4 monsters on your hand, 2 scales with the correct number, and 2 other Pendulum monsters on your hand to link to Electromite. This is the setup if the hand forcing us to not do any Pendulum Summons, usually it's because we only have access to Mythical Beast monster. Mythical Beast hand is good when we are going second, but not effective when we going first. And this is the setup when we have Abductor instead of Surfing.
Whenever I'm going second, I always want to bombard everything that my opponents have with Endymion. All you need is just 6 spell counters on the field and Endymion on the Pendulum Zone. And from here, you can just continue the combo and finish the duel. If your hand situation forcing you to do Pendulum Summon early, and if you're confident enough that set card is not going to be problematic because you have Endymion in your hand, you can go for Beatdown Root as long as you count your attack damage is enough to literally finish your opponents. If your opponents have a monster that can negate monster effects, your number one priority is to summon Jekyll King and make sure you have at least two spell counters on the field before you continue your combo further. And if that monster is indestructible, don't forget that you have servers that can banish monster as well. Another negate board. In this part, you are facing an Omni negate monster and spell negate monster. Endymion Wars Nightmare. And you don't have Endymion in your hand to bombard them. But at least you have access to a lot of spell card, a drawing spell card, and a servant. If this is the situation, 
it's better to play around the negate and keep baiting with card effects that are on our low priority. The highest priority is of course, the Servant. We need to make sure that we can summon Jackal or Endymion onto the field and make sure we have the spell counters enough already on the field. So now let's talk about the tips and tricks of this deck. Reflection. Whenever it's special summon, you can activate its trigger effect, return on the own card that have spell counter, and you open the monster to the hand, and then absorb the spell counter of the returned monster. Magister. While being a monster on the field, only on your opponent's turn, Quick effect remove 3 spell counters to special summon any monster from your deck that can be placed spell counters on it. It's good when your hand is break and got a lot of disruption on your first turn. It's your backup card. The pointer of link monster is really helpful for pendulum summon to reach its potential. You can pendulum summon a total monster from extra deck to those pointed zone by link monster, including your opponent's pointed link monster. If you keep Selene on your final board, its special summon effects is a quick effect. Whenever you're negating a spell or trap using Endymion, you can make Endymion to return itself and activate Selene right away to resummon the same Endymion to the field that Endymion can negate once more. Underworld Goddess, it's your Kaiji monster in the form of Ling monster. Mythical Beast Garuda is your best hand traps for removing problematic monster from the field as long as you have 3 spell counters and it's on targeting. Supreme King Dragon If you want to dump more Pendulum monster to the extra deck before Pendulum summoning, you can summon Supreme King Dragon by attributing both Astrograph and Endymion and copy Electromat effects and redo the same Electromat Astrograph combo package. Diablosis It's a rank 7 Exceeds monster. You can use Reflection Endymion and Astrograph as an Exceed material to summon it. When you are going first and you are not sure what is your opponent's deck is like, you can use Diablosis to have a pick on your opponent's extra deck and banish one of its key extra deck monsters from it. It gives you more advantage when entering turn 2. There is a letter I button at the bottom right screen. If you hold that button, it will show you all the information that you need on the fields, including your total spell counters on each of your cards on the field. It will help you a lot on managing your spell counters. And that's all for the guide. I hope you enjoy and learn a lot about this deck. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. Thanks for watching. If you like it, leave a like and subscribe. 
see you in the dual field.